Hola familia, my name is Ray Olmedo and I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here once more. Today I'm going to be sharing with you um, a personal uh, devo, something based on what happened this uh, weekend, Father's Day weekend in our household. And um, it just kind of brought me to scripture and show me a few things that I needed to be reminded of. So I'm going to share it with you and Hopefully, by the grace of God, uh, it will be a good reminder uh, of God, uh, help, and, and how He comes in our rescue when we really need Him. And uh, I decided to title my Devo a Fighting Chance. So this is what happened. So on Saturday morning, we noticed that our teacup chihuahua Coco was really breathing very um, stressful, like he was not breathing right, it, he was kind of gasping for air, so we decided to take him to the emergency room. And uh, as we were driving there, Becky and I, we, we kind of were going through different scenarios of what the cost of our Coco being like that, or you know what the diagnosis could be, what the consequences of that, decisions that we wanted kind of to be prepared. Uh, for what could happen for better ca best case scenario and worst but really never prepare us to hear what we heard so we we gave Coco uh, to them and uh, technician brought him inside uh, into the clinic and as we were waiting there <clears throat> we were really praying for God's will to be done this is a dear dog if you know us and you know our family he's been with us for 12 years and he's a little three pound chihuahua and he's just so strong and and we love him and we just didn't know what was gonna happen. So finally they moved us into this little room where the vet came and she was a great doctor and super eloquent in the way she explained everything to us. So diagnosis was that Coco has a condition called um, and of course I just blank. Uh, congested heart failure, that's what he has. And uh, they explained to us it's not a regressive condition, so it's not gonna get better, it's a progressive one. So it's just gonna get worse, but it could be, you know, up to six months to 12 months, it could be a month, we don't know. So after we heard everything that needed to be done, we needed to make a decision about how to treat it, and even if we were gonna treat it or not so they gave us a a budget or for 24 hours he was at that moment when we brought him he was oxygen deprived so an oxygen dependent so he needed to be in oxygen and they asked us for 24 hours kind of to give him a fighting chance and after we checked all the numbers and what we really could do for him we said well we can buy him 24 hours of hospital care we can only pay for 12 hours so they say okay let's do it and we were you know trusting coco he's also he's always been so strong and he is a fighter and we really from the beginning kind of got the feeling that he was under great care so we made this decision to just pay for 12 hours and you know let nature run its course and god's willing god's will to be done and that was it when the the mark close to we we received like few updates through those hours but when it was time to pick him up and it was 10 o'clock that night of saturday at uh, <clears throat> eight o'clock they called us and they said that if we take him out of oxygen he won't make it and they were pleading with us for for us to leave him longer and it's a long story but they decided that they were going to do it on their own and keep him there under the same budget that we already had paid for until 10 o'clock in the morning and at nine o'clock they called us and they told us Sunday morning Father's Day this is what we're dealing with they said that he's not he's getting better but very slowly and they asked us to keep him a little longer give him 12 more hours so prayfully we discussed and we just decided him we just decided together to give him a fighting chance and they gave us 50 50 percent of ch chances that we can take him home and then he could have, he could get better and recover from this. However, they did tell us that it could be probably up to six months of quality life for Coco. I could go on and on and on, but um, 
as I was driving back to um, the uh, as I was driving back home, uh, after we left him here in the, f the first time Saturday, I was reflecting on all this, and, and that word keeps on coming back to my head, like fighting chance, fighting chance. We said it so many times. I said, uh, we need to give him a fighting chance. My husband agreed. Becky agreed. The doctors agreed. So we, we decided to do that. So that um, just kind of like brought up scripture to me that is very dear to my heart and it's in the book of Esther and we all know the situation right so I'm going to be sharing from you in Esther from Esther chapter 4 and I'm going to go specifically to that conversation between Mordecai and the people that help Esther uh, as she is inside the castle uh, and he is outside the quarters of the castle and they're having this conversation through people back and forth and um, this situation, it was all about giving the Jews at that moment a fighting chance. Uh, Mordecai was very confident that deliverance will come to them from any other place if Queen Esther didn't decide to go in front of the king, Cerses, to ask to deliver them. But she needed to take action. She needed to make decisions and they were very risky. And all this came together and it was blessed by God's will for, for the Jews to be delivered. So let me read to you. So it's after, um, I'm sorry, Esther chapter 4, verse 12. So when Esther words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. I'm sorry, this is 13. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent, at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from other place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to royal position for such a time as this. Verse 15, then Esther sent his reply, or this reply to Mordecai, go, go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I will go to the king, even though if it's against the law, and if I perish, I'll perish. So verse 17, Mordecai went away and carried out all this, all Esther's instructions. So um, I feel confident that I don't have to give you the context of this situation. Uh, there was a threat against the Jewish, and we know they took action. They did everything they needed to do, just praying and hoping that God will bless it. So I felt that this is exactly what happened in our family. I'm happy to report that Sunday at 10 o'clock, we were able to pick him up, and he's home, and he's recovering unbelievably. He's just really doing well for compared to Saturday morning when we drop him off. And I'm just so grateful that we did give him that fighting chance. And, and I was like thinking, why not? I mean, when we have God that is the one who fights our fights and he goes to battle with us, why not giving us that opportunity, that fighting chance of just give it a try? You know, I feel like as humans, we, 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 give, up, we give up so fast. And this is applied to a little dog, but we know that we go through constant battles every day, every month, every year, because we have an enemy that doesn't rest. So this is my encouragement, my encourage to you, my, my encouragement to you, church family, to just give opportunities um, in any situation with your spouse, with your children, with your uh, personal relationships at work. Give them a fighting chance. Just trust that God is going to be there. Bring your best. Let the other person bring their best, and then just hope for victory because whether it's a day or 10 days or a month with God we always have victory sometimes he doesn't answer the our prayers the way we want but we know he has the best intentions for our hearts so this is my little diva today and I hope that touches your heart the way I have touched mine and uh, and I'm gonna close in prayer father thank you Lord that we can go to your word for simple things like this it's just fine 
stories that resonate with us and what we're going through, Lord. I thank you for my dog, Coco, and for what you've done this weekend for him. And I pray for everybody that is in a situation like this, Lord. It's just that when you get a devastated a diagnosis and you really have no hope and everything turns around, Lord, and you just give us a new opportunity just because we just push through it and, and, and give it a fighting chance in you, Lord, and in you only. So we thank you and we praise you. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Thank you.